Oh! Oh, hi fellas! Uh, I was meant to be brewing today, but we're pushing it back a week. Uh, I've had a family day. I've been dicking about in the garden and getting some stuff ready for when the summer hits. If it hits, but who knows when that's going to happen. So next Saturday, we're doing up another New England IPA. But today, we're going to get through the questions that were posted by you guys. And I've got them all here, look. I've got them all here printed up. Let's start. Christopher Clark. I think this is a, a request for a video. It's not a question. It says, video on how you came to your water additions from start to finish, including software and um, starting points from the water company. If that's a video that you want, and it's a video that people are wanting, then I'll definitely put one together and pop it up. Dave Hancock. What are your future plans for the channel and your plans for expanding slash developing the brewery? Right. Let's start with expanding and developing. In regards to expanding, I am stuffed for space. I can't really expand um, too much. The pots are the right size, so I don't really want to get them any bigger. The pumps are the right size for me, don't want to get them any bigger. I think the thing that would need to expand and get bigger is the two bottlenecks in the whole system from start to finish of brewing to, to drinking the beer. There are two, it's the kegerator and the fermentation fridge. I've only got room for two kegs in the kegerator and I've only got room for one fermenter in the fermentation chamber. That slows down my ability to brew up a beer. I couldn't brew every weekend because I'd have nowhere to put it. So that's why my brew days are sort of spaced out with hopefully content in between. I think the plan or the way to go forward is to do something very similar to what Harry's done at his house for um, his bar, which is to build, instead of having a fridge, take the, the guts out of the fridge and put them into an insulated chamber. So then I can make the chamber to whatever size I want. So I can make it wider and I can put the um, gas bottle in it. I've got like two foot at the side of it that I can expand into and make it taller because there are there are certain fermentation products that I would like to use but I can't use them. Stainless steel, uh, SS Brewtech, Conical, something like that. I can't, I ain't got the space to get it in there. It's too, it's too small. I think that's where I'm going to expand. Developing, the uh, the next thing that I'm going to be working towards is getting out the Gecko fittings, swapping the Gecko fittings out for stainless steel cam locks and things like that, and pretty much revamping the, the Kegels and swapping parts out as I go for the, the, the proper thing, instead of it being um, a DIY botched together thing to get me where I need to be, i.e. like on the boil pot, plenty of washers, onto a radiator valve, onto a bit of tubing, that's my side glass. I think I'm going to go down the route of swapping them out for the actual products that have been built for the job. I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Future plans for the channel is to just keep on going, keep the wheels rolling, um, keep the videos churning out, keep the growth going because, and I only say growth because when you see the subscribers rolling in, it drives you to get out and make more content. Simon Thornhill, hey hey, can you please give us the coconut shy PA recipe? I'm going to answer that at the end because there's a bit of a story to go with it. Uh, Rob, freaking love you man. Andrew Roster, how can you start a comp to brew the best clone of your coconut shy PA and then not supply a recipe? Seriously, where is it? So that comp is referring to was the leaderboard um, on the whiteboard over here. And that came about because Paul is here brewing sent me his version of the coconut Sharpier. And I tell you, it wasn't a million miles away from the original. So with that, I thought, well, he's obviously watched the video because I had put a recipe out there. He's obviously watched the video, took from it where he thinks the, um, the hops have gone and whatnot. And tried to clone it that way and got pretty damn close. In regards to where is it, at the end fella. Kevin Christown. For those of us in the States, where can I get a heater for my fermenter like yours? Can't find them here in the States and I'm trying to find someone that will ship here. 
Oh, you're trying to find the shipper, are you? Trying to find shipper. It's a tubular space heater. I'm sure you guys have them in the States. Just go to like your DIY store, home, home depot. Uh, and then he's put underneath. Also, how about a map of where the jug is traveling? <laughs> So he's referring to the uh, the Flask Gordon. Funnily enough, and this is where I need people to help me out with this, I thought it would be nice to have some sort of digital map. Did I just spit everywhere then? On the page where people could log it in and it sort of draws a little arrow to where it's gone and then so forth. So you end up with like this. If there's anything out there that I could use in that way, then please let me know. Dave Stewart. He's put, when you've carbonated your beer and turn the gas down to serving pressure, do you just leave it connected to the keg until it's empty? Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. So this is how I do it. Like 20 PSI for a day or two, and then I knock it right down to serving pressure then, or just above serving pressure, uh, and I let it carb slowly, nice and slow, because I ain't gonna be drinking it for two weeks anyway, because it's gonna be conditioning. But once it's there, straight down to serving pressure, and leave it leave it hooked up to the gas and as you obviously take beer out it's going to replace the gas Rainer Allington Rainer Allington would you be up for doing a collaboration brew for a fruit bomb New England IPA also where's flask Gordon got to Harry's actually put up a video explaining what's happening with the flask go over what he put in his video he's not been very well and he's having some shit to deal with at work but he said back end of this week it's going to be off and on its way. And in regards to the um, in regards to the collaboration, I never say never, fella. I never say never. Pat Collins, what do you use to clean your kit? So I get asked this quite a bit, and um, I can't actually answer because there's no real information on this pot. But this is from Wineworks. It's a little home brew shop down the road, and it's just their generic cleaner slash steriliser so you can actually clean and sterilise with this. Justin Berwick If you were to improve your present home brewing setup what fundamental changes would you make? So I think I've already answered it earlier on. Swapping out all the uh, all the bits on the pots, improving the fermentation chamber I'm going to have to get some way of building a bigger one. I can't get a tall fridge in here like some people use because of this. So, you know, I've probably got a foot and two foot either side. I've got a foot in height, wasted, and two foot either side that I can use. And the only way I'm going to use that is if I build one myself and use the guts from the fridge, like I said. Kelvin Griffiths, 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 says, I know, I know. Are you and or Harry going to London Beercraft event on the 4th of August? The 4th of August. Is this the, uh, is this the one that Baldi was on about? Or is it the um, Great British Beer Festival? Because if it's the one Baldi's on about, uh, no. Uh, if it's the Great British Beer Festival, possibly. I've not actually spoke to Harry if he's going or not, so I don't know. It's up in the air at the minute. If I'm going to be going to one of them, it's going to be the Great British Beer Festival. Uh, John Kirkwood, any tips for sparge? I keep missing my target OG. I'm getting closer, but still coming four to five points short. Could I send you a beer mail if my first two brews turn out okay? All right, let's answer the last bit of that question. Yes, you can send me the beer mail if it turns out okay, and I'll do a video, tell you what I think. Okay, any tips on sparging? So I'm, I'm assuming you've, you're thinking that, you, <coughs> that your problem on missing your OG gravity is related to your sparge, because you put any tips for the sparge. When I sparge, I used to measure out the exact sparge water I wanted and then sparge with that until it was empty um, and then I swapped it out a little bit instead of doing that I would keep an eye on what was coming out of the um, runoff when sparging so I wasn't dropping below like 10 12 10 10 and I would use the volume in the boil pot to um, determine when I was going to cut that sparge off. I suppose people are going to think there's a risk of if I'm doing it that way and not looking at how much sparge water I'm using. I guess some people are going to say that there's a risk of over sparging but you're not going to over sparge it because you have used the right amount of mash water so if you're doing something stupid and using like five litres for a mash 
when you want like 12 and then you're going to put that volume in on the sparge then yes you're going to over sparge it but a normal mash with the, the right amount of mash water then I just run the sparge until the volume is correct. If you're four or five points short after you boil then you could take a reading once an hour of the boils up and see where you are and if you're short you could always boil a bit longer to get them points back or you could look at the volume which you've collected. This threw me out when I first started. I would still be collecting sort of uh, sparge water because it was still at like 10-10 but my volumes that I needed pre-boil were vastly increased and so obviously your volume is higher than what the calculated numbers are on your recipe. So check that you're collecting the right amount pre-boil, check that you've got the right amount um, post-boil so that the numbers match. I hope that's helpful. Sean Kelly, have you ever considered using a firmer well in your fermentation bucket so you can check the temperature of the beer rather than using a water bottle or sticking the probe to the side of the bucket? Um, quite a few people have said to me like you want to get a thermal well in there for me sticking the probe to the side of the bucket is working fine it's working fine for me the beer is fermenting well it's not fermenting high at all it's not fermenting low and it comes out nice and clean Raina Allington is back again Tom when you dry hop do you put it in a bag or just dump it all in I need a beer you can't go wrong with it. Right, do I put it in a bag or dump it all in? No, I don't bag it, I just dump it. The thing is, with the way, I would say quite a few of us do it now, with the ability to cold crash, you don't really need to bag them. Because when you cold crash, it's obviously dropping all the way down to the bottom, and then when you're running your beer off, you just leave your siphon shy of the bottom and it doesn't pick anything up, nothing blocks up and it doesn't make a mess and it's not cloudy or anything like that. In fact, most of the beers that I keg are pretty damn clear coming out and there'll be probably, I don't know, 40, 50 grams of pellet in the bottom. But no, I would just say dump them in, don't bother with a bag. Even if you haven't got the ability to cold crash, it will settle down over time enough for you to uh, to siphon the beer off into a keg or bottle and even then if there's anything just any little bits particles floating around after you've kegged or bottled that will sink down uh, especially if you're bottling in secondary uh, fermentation uh, it'll sink down to the bottom and in the keg you'll just have one that's uh, poured off that's a little bit murky and then the rest is fine but if you're cold crashing it drops it all out and it just kegs nice and clear so don't bother with the bag it's something else to sanitize and keep clean don't bother with it steve gasson he says uh, will you be attempting to make your own cider this year if so do you think you'll attempt a hot cider uh you know what we bought a bloody press me and uh, me and the dwarf can't even can't even tell you where it is it's down there we bought a press we went halves on it we were gonna make cider every year and then every year since then around cider making season <laughs> we've been absolutely busy with something or other and we haven't had the time to go out collect the apples bring them back to mine wash the apples scrap the apples press them into the um, fermentation bucket and, and ferment it away i would like to make it again though so maybe i'll persuade him to to have a bash here again this year but if i was going to do it yes i would definitely take a couple of gallons in the demijohn and do a few hot ciders last one sean kelly if i could be so bold as to ask two <laughs> ask two questions you may be bored uh what are your opinions on sanitizing the hot side of your brewery hlt etc whenever i've brewed i've been sanitizing everything is this overkill? It, yeah, yeah, it's overkill because anything post boil wants to be sanitized and anything pre boil obviously wants to be clean but doesn't need to be sanitized because the temperatures ultimately leading up to the last step, which is a boil for an hour, is going to kill off any nasties 
that are uh, in an unsanitized pot. Obviously clean, they've got to be nice and clean. There can't be like mold in there and things. The boil will take care of it. The final step will sanitize it. All right, now the question mm, about the coconut shy PA. In regards to the coconut shy PA, to cut a long story short, we wanted to do a couple of things with it before the recipe was out there. We wanted to have a little play around with it, see if we could improve it anywhere. We wanted to enter it into some competitions and we wanted to brew a little bit more of it and get it out um, to see if people were still enjoying it before entering it into competitions and things like that. And all them things have been achieved so we've tinkered around with it, it's been entered into a, a Ciba uh, regional competition, one of bronze friggin rights and people are still hungry for it. So the reason why I didn't chuck the recipe out there is because I don't know because I thought because I because I knew that it was going to be um, put into a few competitions that were like you know in the in with the big boys and obviously it was um, put in under Ida Valley Brewing because I can't no you can't just enter a beer into a Seba competition it has to be a, a brewery that enters it. Um, I just wanted to um, keep it under my hat a little bit until we'd done what we wanted to do with it. And so the recipe is coming. I'm going to film a separate video and it's going to be up not too long in the distant future and it's going to be up. So in regards to this, this leaderboard you'll have a recipe if you want to uh, get onto this leaderboard. Uh, you'll have a recipe to uh, to follow if you want to just brew it yourself you'll have a recipe to follow but I know there's going to be a few people out there that are going to be like uh, what a dickhead and things like that which is fine but that's the reason why I held back on releasing the um, the recipe because we just wanted to do a, a couple of things with it <laughs> so as always guys don't forget to thumb up this video because you don't know what to do. Don't forget to hit this little icon here to subscribe. Click it and you won't miss out. It's coming up next. Share the video. Get it up all to see you until next time. I'm out of here. Boop.